I love to travel to teach sewing, and one of the reasons I enjoy it so much is that sewing has a language all its own. It doesn't matter if I'm fluent in the local language. Sooner or later, the language of the needle and thread makes it possible for me to enjoy a conversation with anyone who loves sewing. Today, our official language will be stitched together with threads of new ideas and projects that will allow you to create picture-perfect heirlooms. I'm so excited that we've been able to travel to your home today. Let's sit back and enjoy our time together. Welcome to my sewing room. This nightshirt is just fabulous, made out of this wonderfully, wonderfully soft cotton knit, which feels like silk. And you know what the best part is? It's all made on a serger. The ladies nightshirt is so cute and it has an insertion, the French sewn insertion by serger, French sewn I might add, with beading and insertion and beading with the beautiful silk ribbon run through it. And look at the sleeves with beading and edging. Now, for those of you that have not worked with beading, what it is, it has entrée on either side and ribbon slots and you a beading means you can run ribbon through it. This is the cutest ladies night shirt and we do not want to forget our little girls too. So we have a little girl night shirt and the same trim on the on the bodice and on the sleeves. And for our little girls we also have a little a little short pajama bottom or a little tap pants with the trim around the bottom. It is so easy to do this on your serger. Now this is what the beading looks like. It has entre on either side with a seam allowance and this is what edging looks like and before we use the edging we'll just run a, a, a rotary cutter along there real quickly and straighten it. Just cut off those little scallops and when you serge it together just very very quickly one fell swoop on the serger there it is joined together and then that piece is going to be joined to the knit. So we'll have the seam allowances butted together once again run the serger down it all finished and this is what it looks like when you use the the serger and just roll it right on there this is the beading i want to show you a little trick about beading we use a bodkin to run ribbon through this is the little bodkin now when i was a little girl when we ran ribbon through something we just used a safety pin and hooked the ribbon to the end of the safety pin but this bodkin is so wonderful you know the advantage of this over a safety pin well i'll tell you it keeps it nice and flat when you run it through. So it's always nice to bead with a bodkin. Then another uh, a treatment, we have the beading, the insertion, the beading, and quickly run it through the serger, and guess what? It's absolutely perfect. French sewn by serger. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend Peggy Dillbone. Peggy is an education specialist with Who's fine a Viking? Peggy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Martha. And Thanks I love your nightgowns. Oh, Thank you. Night shirts, I guess they yeah. are. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cozy just to take a nap in that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It just feels so good. They do feel good, <laughs> don't they? But the best part is that we can do it all on the serger, and it's so fast and easy. I just love the serger. And what I love about the serger mainly is that the steps we would take to sew these two pieces together, we actually would have to do with three steps with the sewing machine, and we do it in one with the serger. And one of the tricks I want to share is that, so I can tell the right sides, I like to put these little red dots on there so that when I put them together, I know that I have the right sides together. So we would lay this piece to this piece, right sides together before we surged. And this is what it would look like when we surge it. So it's very fast, very easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. First of all, when I come to my serger, I love the fact that it has these two little marks on the front. Now, they're not actually marked with black marker, but I did that myself just to show you that you could see these marks a little bit easier, but those actually tell me my needle positions. I've set up the serger for three thread rolled edge so that it makes a very tiny, very nice, neat edge. 
Another trick you can do if you have trouble following the header on the fabric, you can mark it with your blue wash away marker. So it makes it very easy. So I'm just gonna surge this through so you, so you can see how fast it is. All I do is line up the marks that I have on the fabric and the mark on the foot so that I get a perfect stitch. So now when you see that stitch, it's in the perfect place because I used both the markers on the foot and the markers on the fabric. And when you open it up, you still see the header. And I love those little red dots too. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's the way to tell the right size. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> the next thing I did was to attach it to the pink fabric, which is that beautiful knit. When I attached it to the knit, I set the serger with the differential feed so that the di so that the serger wouldn't stretch the knit fabric out and i love that feature about the serger the differential feed differential allows me to set it martha so that the front feed system moves at a different speed and it won't pull the knit fabric and stretch it out oh wow isn't that a great thing yeah, to have that's great this is what it looks like when it's attached and when you look at it from the right side, see how my red dots match up? That would be the leg band. To create the band in the center, I used beading, embroidered insertion, and beading. Joined them together the exact same way with the three thread rolled edge. And this is what that fancy band would look like. Then it was attached to the knit fabric so I've made my own rectangle fabric. I attached a small piece for the top, the pretty fancy band, and then attached a longer piece, made a rectangle that was large enough for the pattern, laid my pattern on, and cut out the front of the nightshirt. And did the sleeves the same way? And did the you sleeves make, you make, the same In other words, you create the fabric, and then you use your pattern and yes. cut it out. Oh, Peggy, that's just pure Isn't magic great? on the surgery. Yes, it is. And Good. now Peggy has some sewing inspirations for you. Peggy, this is one of the most beautiful lingerie bags I've ever seen. Now tell us the tricks. It's all done by serger, Martha. Oh, please. <laughs> That's the trick. Oh, Fast and easy. It is so pretty. Out of silk dupioni. Silk dupioni and ribbon. Such and a lace. nice thing to try. And you know what? When you travel, honestly, I love lingerie bags, and especially when I travel, to keep everything all separate. Absolutely. Peggy, this is gorgeous. Oh, tell me about this pillow. Once again, beautiful silk dupioni and silk organza. Tell us about the smocking. That is in the hoop smocking. Smocking embroidery by machine smocking. Oh, and then you put the little pearls on by hand, yes, I suppose. Yes, I did. You, oh, look at this. All of this do, called 10-minute smocking. 10 minutes smocking. <laughs> I love it. And I think you told me a real trick about this. Serger completely. Serger completely. Except for the machine embroider, the little tiny Absolutely. machine embroider that says what? It says, sweet baby. Even the binding was done on the serger? The binding was put on with a four thread overlock and then turned over. So it was very, very fast. The only machine stitching was stitching in the ditch. Oh, to Peggy. hold the binding down. Precious. And these wonder, I'm telling you, this knit feels just like butter. It is so soft. This all done on the serger too, I yes, guess. Yes, it was. And now the binding, what stitch did you use for the, um, for to go around the edge? On the, on the edge, I used a cotton thread, a heavyweight cotton thread, and just used a three thread overlock stitch. Three thread overlock, boy, that makes it easy. Yes. Just, but it's so pretty. It's very fast. Oh, and here's one that says, here's the little boy's The little version. boy one, we have to have little boy. And oh, I love what you did here. That's just bias and I stitched that on with the cover stitch with my serger. So you stitch this is so I'm telling yeah. you you and your Very serger. Very fast. I love and my serger. Have to, have to have a little boy version too. Same thing without the the lace trim around it. This wonderful knit. Yeah. It feels so good. Oh Great. Peggy this is so adorable. Once again out of the knit and this beautiful Lily of the Valley insertion. Tell me this was not all done on the serger. That was all done on the serger, Martha. Oh, Peggy, I think that's you're the a serger, serger queen. Class. That's a, a serger, serger class, class I teach. Oh. And the edging was serged, but then the edge, I used a little edge scalloped of the edge with the sewing machine. It was just with the blind, 
blind hem stitch around the edge. You searched to make that it pretty scalloped. and then used a sew. Now, what did you do on the okay, bottom? Okay, I searched it first okay. and turned it up. The neat thing about when you serge the edge, you have a perfect edge to turn up against. It's very easy to turn oh. up against a serger edge. And then this beautiful nightgown. I think this is one of your patterns, isn't it, Peggy? Yes, it is. And this is um, machine techniques. The machine some serger and some machine. I have to cheat a little and put serger in there, <laughs> but it has machine embroidery and oh, toy look at needle that pretty pin tucks. Bow. But whenever I sew bridging and insertion, I have to use my serger. It's just oh, too just easy. So quick. <laughs> Peggy, nobody has any time, really. No. And everyone loves, and you know what I love about this nightgown? It is so wearable. Anyone yeah. would enjoy this particular style. I just love your design there. Oh, That's Peggy, true. thank you so much for bringing these wonderful things. Thank you, Martha. And Peggy still has more for you. A so quick, so easy project. Peggy, I love what you brought to share with our viewers. Thanks, Martha. This was kind of fun. I saw the idea in a very fancy catalog and then had to take a little step further, but I've done picture mats. Instead of fabric-covered frames, I did fabric-covered mats. This one, I actually did some lay shaping. This is linen fabric, and then I did gimp work around the edge to finish. On these, I just used some decorative stitches and put little sailboats. My grandson Tyler's room it has sailboats, so I did little sailboats. And then I put a little extra frame with fabric around here. On this one, my grandson just graduated from high school, so I put his name in his class. And these were just decorative stitches and built-in stitches on the sewing machine. Can I brag a little bit? Yes. I think you said he has a wonderful college scholarship, didn't he? Yes, he does. Oh, he's to go to where? Virginia Tech. So he's going to be an engineer, and he's just how very exciting. excited. We're all very proud of him. Oh, how he's a great, okay, great now young go man. Ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing that I did was to interface with a heavy craft type interfacing, just a piece of linen. I wanted the nice look of the linen. So I pressed that on, and you have the, the interfacing here, which made the fabric very firm. Then I marked the fabric. I took a mat, a ready-made mat, and I used that to mark. I have quartered it so I could use the same quarter marks. And I used, I wouldn't use a permanent marker, but I would use my blue marker. And I marked the center, the outside edge, and then I marked where I wanted to put my stitching. Then I took it to the sewing machine and I stitched and did, this is just a little zigzag stitch, so it's nothing very fancy. You could use just anything on your machine. And I stitched around the center so that I would know where to stitch the second piece of interfacing which I laid to the right side with, right, with the right sides together. I stitched from the back side to create the inner frame because it was easier to see. So you could see the stitching. Then you cut out the center and you could do little clips in the corner and you turn this interfacing to the wrong side and press it just like that. So all of this frame gets turned to the wrong side. And because you have the sticky side that presses easily from the right side, none of the edges would show, okay? So we've pressed that. Now I have a really firm piece of fabric and I just trimmed it around the outside and then you just slip it into your picture frame. Now this is just another idea that you could use. I sewed some rickrack down just to give a little border of rickrack. And I used a foot that holds the rickrack in place. It has this little snout 
and it holds the rick rack in place so it didn't slip all over the place. Okay. So all I did what, was stitch on the lines. What an adorable idea. And for all of those pictures that we have, and when you take them to a framing place, it's horribly expensive, and you can't personalize exactly. it the way we did. Isn't that fun? Oh, it is fun. Peggy, yeah. thank you so much. It's been a joy to have You're you here welcome, today. You're welcome, Martha. Thank you. And now we have some machine embroidery tips for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest, my friend, Denise Applegate. Denise is sales and creative manager of embroidery designs for Cactus Punch. Denise, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Martha. I'm right. so excited to be here. <laughs> I love your vest. Oh, thank and you. And you made that out of? Um, old neckties I recycled and old put them together. I love it. Denise, what do you have for us today? Well, we're going to take some necktie fabric and we're actually going to cover buttons. So we have a little wooden button here that's on a silk fabric from a necktie. And we've taken a collection that's heirloom embroidery and one design that we've taken out of it and we've divided it into two pieces so that it would fit into this space. A tiny little space for that adorable little button. So I'll let you have the little button there. Oh, it's so cute. We have the older style covered buttons were ones that were metal. And what we would do is we would put these together. Here we have wooden button that has two pieces. And I've got the needles here because I think it's important to let the viewers know to use a smaller needle on your silks. Okay. So I have a 60 or a 70 okay. needle. Okay. okay, wonderful tip. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the piece once it's embroidered out into a square shape and then into a round shape because if I lift this up it has two pieces. Okay. All right and then this would lay over top. Adorable. Okay. Then we're going to take and we're going to put the two together so if I flip this one over you'll see that it has our stabilizer the silk inside the button and then what we're going to do is we're going to push it the two together and cut the fit. We're going to use this pen to draw around so we'll know where to cut. Okay. All right. Then I use my little tip here with my glue to glue the two together. After it's all finished. After, After it's, it's all, all glue finished. on the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then what we're going to do is I've got one here in the machine. We're going to sew it out. And that really is an old necktie, isn't it? It is an old necktie. I, I can see the shape of the necktie. Yeah. And I used a fusible interfacing. Okay. And with this fusible interfacing, because the necktie is long and narrow, okay. I took and fused the necktie to the interfacing so that it would fit in the hoop. Oh, okay, okay. And that is not a wash away uh, stabilizer. No, this will stay in and keep it firm in the button. And one thing we should let the viewers know, Martha, is not to wash these. I would yeah, take them off yeah. before I wash them. I wonder if they'd be dry. They're dry cleanable, I guess, aren't they? Or, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll probably take it off. Yeah, I would Beautiful take it off. wooden button. Yeah. So once it's finished, then we can take and change our color. And it's only three colors, so it goes together pretty quickly. That is absolutely fascinating to use old neckties. I mean, that's wonderful fabric. You've got silk fabric. Why not use them for something? It's a great piece of fabric. Oh, I think. Denise, it is so cute. And you know what? I was just thinking this little button would be so adorable on your, the wooden button on your little necktie. You could do that. Too. Denise, thank you so very much. Thanks for having me, Martha. And now I have a quilting idea or two for you. Heirloom quilting is one of my favorite things to do and one of my favorite things to teach because you can do blocks and do so many of the heirloom techniques and then put it all together and have a masterpiece quilt. This quilt is so beautiful. It has all kinds of different techniques on it, which we'll have throughout the whole series. But the one I want to talk about today is this beautiful square here with puffing and wider beading than Peggy used this morning, but beading on both sides. And the beading here is attached to the flat fabric like Peggy showed you how to do on a serger. And here the beading is attached to a puffed fabric, which you use the same te uh, technique exactly, except you gather the fabric before you serge it or so it by machine. What is puffing? It starts with a straight strip of fabric, a very plain straight strip of fabric. All right, the old-fashioned way of doing puffing, and perfectly good way, I might add, is to run two rows of gathering stitches on either side. 
just like gathering the skirts that we used to make those full gathered skirts that I wore in high school. I remember my mama sewed so many of those for me because I, the fuller the better. Now one thing that we have been doing through the years to make puffing more evenly distributed, we fold it in half and with the magic blue or magic purple pen you mark the halfway points and you fold it again and mark the quarter points. That always makes it easier to distribute the puffing. Okay, I'm gonna show you another little trick before we look at that finished piece. If you have a puffing foot, or excuse me, a gathering foot, I've always called the gathering foot the puffing foot. On your sewing machine, it's a funny looking little foot and sometimes you may be able to order it. Even if your machine does not come with one, you might be able to order one. And it has a little slit in the middle. Pay no attention to that slit. We do not need that slit for puffing. Just slip your fabric underneath this gathering foot. I have my stitch length set on about three and I'm going to sew slowly and if you'll watch what happens with this gathering foot I'm sewing one side of my puffing going down one side and it kind of curls around do not worry that's just the way it's supposed to I'm gathering one side and then as soon as I finish gathering one side of the puffing I will go back and I will gather the other side and some people say, well, Martha, do you need to go the opposite direction? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really doesn't make any difference. Now that's the easy way to make puffing, run the gathering foot down both sides. This one was gathered in the traditional way. And it's very important when you gather puffing to distribute it evenly. I'm going to attach it to this beautiful piece of Victorian beading. I've got one piece for each side. I've got two pieces. You remember the quilt ends up like this. Okay, so I'm going to distribute this puffing. And let me just show you another uh, little way of, of making the puffing be pretty even. If you'll pull it this way, and I'll have to distribute the gathers, but if you'll kind of pull it this way, and sometimes actually pin it on a board to be sure it's even. And now then I'm getting ready to attach one side of the beading and I put it right sides to right sides and I can either stitch in the ditch, trim and zigzag with a sewing machine, or I can do just do it all in one fell swoop with the serger. Okay, here I have pinned it to the edge and I can just simply like Peggy showed you a few minutes ago, I can just run my rolled hem on the serger on this side or I can choose Choose to do the sewing machine way, which is stitch in the ditch, trim, and zigzag to finish it off. Okay, after I make my center piece, it is then time to attach the side pieces, and this once again can be done just like Peggy showed you. Just uh, surge down one side and it's finished, or with the entredo edge, stitch in the ditch, trim, and zigzag. You can run your ribbon in, you have a beautiful quilt square. And now I have a beautiful, beautiful blouse to share with you from my vintage collection. Portobello Road in London is one of my favorite markets, flea markets. And this blouse, I, I purchased one very cold December morning on Saturday morning. The beautiful neckline has edging and insertion. And look at the bodies. It almost looks like a checkerboard square with the pin tucks in the middle and the insertions uh, here they overlap and on the corners they're mitered the sleeves are so beautiful on this blouse again more checkerboard with the little uh, the laces are covered and the insertion at the top and the bottom and a little bit of gathered lace at the bottom all stitched by hand I might add let me turn it around and just show you how pretty the little buttons it's very unusual to find a blouse with all of the original buttons still on it and a few little tucks for our sewing from the heart today I have a letter from Deborah Williams from Sierra Vista Arizona the Mary Martha circle of the Sierra Vista United Methodist women has found a way to help our community to be a blessing to others Blessing Bags, the vision of our pastor, Dr. Peter Vaught, is a sewn ditty bag filled with travel-sized toiletries, soap, shampoo, toothbrush, toothpaste, lotions, a coupon for a day shower program at a lo local shelter, and a devotion. An optional $5 gift card from a fast food restaurant may also be included. Blessing Bags offer comfort to the recipient and can provide one answer is to help someone who is homeless. Sincerely, Deborah Williams from Sierra Vista, Arizona. Deborah, I was so excited about your Mary Martha circle um, of your uh, Methodist church there. It's just wonderful that you're reaching out to help those less fortunate as so many women who love to sew all around the country are doing. Thank you for sending this note. 
thank you for coming to be with me in my sewing room today. I would really like to invite you to come back next time.